Well, hey, welcome to Kimby Jude Side Out. I'm Robert Winters. Judy Nathans. And today is November 27th. 27th, right, not the 28th. I'm rushing along. 2018. Yes. Right? Right. The day after the 26th. Very good. <laughs> so you can do math, I can you? That's right. about it. Robert, you're the expert. Yeah, actually, this is the time of the semester because, as many of you may know, oh. I teach mathematics oh. for a living. That's, it, that's my it, real job. Are you? All the civics is just a hobby. It, it, yeah, I know. Man, right. Amazing how you devote so much to your hobby. But this, um, is, this is the time of year when, uh, you exams? know, this, well, yeah, oh. we, we get, I, I gave some exams, I graded them, I Are gave we talking M about were, MIT or Harvard both, extension? Both, actually. I think I give, I give a Harvard exam on Thursday, and then I, I just gave one to MIT. Do they give all their exams before Christmas break? Because I know some colleges, um, it's after the Christmas Harvard break. Harvard used to be after right, uh, and the break, it. and then some years ago, they changed the whole Harvard schedule, yeah. which, which had this uh, uh, cascade effect, because... Mm. To, they had to move everything up, but then that changed the summer school. So instead of being a seven-week program, it being a six-week program. Oh. And then for those of us who in the summer, we used to teach five hours a week for seven weeks. Then we had to teach six hours a week for six weeks. So oh, well. It changed everything. Uh, so now we're here, we're now we're there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's, uh, right, so uh, it's, but it's that time of year. So when, you're busy correcting exams. Um, yeah, I do, do it a fair amount of that. Um, but it's also the time when you, you're, uh, um, you know, Class, classes are kind of like very organic in the sense that, you know, you start off with these ingredients at the beginning of a semester and you don't really know who you got. You know, sometimes you get a pretty good indication on day one, but sometimes you don't. And then there comes a point where you start to, it's sort of like, you know, it's like going out for dinner with your family or friends. You know, you go to your classroom and then you have a, you have a running conversation, you have gags that you've been playing off of mm -hmm. for weeks and weeks and weeks. So it's actually kind of the fun time of the semester when hmm. you're sort of in sync with it's your It's just getting your, your to know group. the group that you're in. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's also the time when students who've been struggling are really struggling. Mm. Uh, and, the th and the students who are had the capacity to really excel are just taken off. Mm. So it's actually, you know, from a teacher's point of view, it's actually pretty exciting to huh. be in the midst of if that. If you can deal with both ends. Yeah, 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 and that's not always so easy. No, I mean, I, I, I think of public school teachers, and that is hard yeah. to deal with the kids that are struggling and the kids that want more and more and more because they're right. beyond. And I actually started yeah. out as a, hey, we are running off on wild tangents. It's what yeah. I do lately a yeah, lot. Yeah, right. But we'll I, cut it off soon. I'm very, very <laughs> soon. You know, I started off, uh, you, know, you know, when I first came to Boston, I actually put little signs around town saying tutoring in math, physics, and chemistry. Oh. And I, you know, earned a few physics. bucks. You're a physics person? I can do physics, sure. Whoa. Right. All right. So anyway, I had to uh, um, I had to pay my very expensive rent then. Yeah, what, you was a $30, $100 70, a month? $70 yeah. a month. Yeah, Right? Yeah. For my We're little showing teeny, our age. My teeny little room. It was rent controlled. Uh, it was rent controlled. Yeah. But actually, the rent in that building wasn't particularly controlled compared to a lot of other mm. buildings at the time. But, um, you know, so I've just raised some chump change tutoring for people, you know. And then, you know, after a little while, next thing you know, I find myself in a classroom. Next thing you know, I find myself in front of big lecture halls yeah. or whatever. But, you know, you start out just like tutoring people one-on-one, -on -one, right? Uh -huh. And I, sometimes I feel more comfortable doing that. Sometimes I actually feel more comfortable in front of a big lecture hall, you know, but not a show. It's like theater, stand-up. Well, you do have to, it is. You, well, yeah. 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 No, actually, when they train teaching assistants and, or people who are going to be teaching in classroom teachers, um, after, you know, once upon a time, they sort of, you know, taught them all this pedagogical, this, that, and the you other. You should bring in comedians. They brought in theater yeah. coaches. Or actually. improv people. Yeah, improv. Yeah. Impro and honestly, yeah. that's probably Big the best difference. thing you can do if you want to become mm -hmm. a good teacher. Yeah. You know, just like do improv, right? Yeah. Well, so. no, I, I, most of the improv classes are all MIT neuro people. Yeah. I mean, or they're even teaching them, because a lot of comedians, it's that other side. It's not so a bad place to start, yeah. Yep. So, anyway, back to the civic world. Okay, civic yeah. Civic and political world. Slow, slow doings. I had a lot of meetings this week, but slow doings because of Thanksgiving holidays. So yeah, I think... Very uh, short meeting last night. I was watching. I said, wait a minute. Over already? It's like over. Two policies? 70 minutes. I know. Yeah. I do want to ask you about one thing. Did you watch? Were you there? I was there, yeah. I couldn't see you in the audience. I was hiding. Ah, because I do no, watch it, it at home. Uh, just... What was the charter write it about uh, application for a cur was it a curb cut? I, did, I I knew it was about trees, but I something a okay. five year old. What was that? There about? was a there was a um, there was that an was application, the application for a curb cut for right. a place I think on Whittier Street. Exactly, or and I guess and um, Quentin Zondervan went to go look at it. Right, but you know this is one of those funny things. So so this is this is a situation where somebody's 
you know, just wants to either put in or move a curb cut, whatever. But a tree's in the way, but right? There, well, there had been a tree in the way, so the oh. tree was taken down. Now, was the tree taken down very recently or Apparently unclear? a while ago, no? Maybe so. But, but it's a city tree, though. Bordered on private property? I think there, that well, the I issue? think Council or Vice Mayor Devereaux pointed yes. out that there was a tree that was in front of the house that was would have been a city tree. But yeah. there's also one that was in the background, in the backyard or side yard okay. that didn't seem, seem no longer to be there. And... Now listen, I, this is this is all well and good. If you, if, if yeah, moving a, a curb or installing a curb cut mean, means taking down a city tree, I think there's a valid argument you can make whether you should say that's good or bad. Right. But um, well, they do need some kind of permit for a city tree, right? Right. But this this struck me as sort of almost like a little opportunistic to sort mm. of say, well, we're really interested in the canopy, so let's use this person's application for a curb cut yeah, an to sort of bring of up the larger issue about ordinance about trees on private property right about regulating yeah. private whether yeah. you can or cannot remove yeah, trees confusing. on private property yeah. by the way just to run off on another wild tangent mm -hmm. right um this morning when i had to was forced to go up on my flat roof in oh. cambridge to oh, clear a roof, right, yeah. uh, a roof a plugged up roof drain mm. um plugged up by yesterday. leaves of a tree I tell you, if I had a chainsaw oh. this morning, boy, I would have taken every day. Because how do you down. clean those gutters? A what? Just well, recently? these aren't gutters. It mines a flat roof. Oh, so, that what so happens just is, up on the roof? Leaves gather, sticks and twigs oh. from trees gather, and wow. whatever. And yeah, it's a maintenance thing. You got to pick it up. But you know, sometimes you don't really know you have a problem until the next thing you know, you have water's leaves. raining down in through some of these living rooms. Oh wow! And you know, uh, so anyway, we all <laughs> we love our trees, don't mm. we? But the thing is, is the, you know, there are some potential issues here too, and homeowners have to kind of maintain yeah. their property. You know, right. I have to take some branches off now because right. we're ragging my roof. Right. But um, right. you know, it's it's um, anyway tread gently into the realm of private. Isn't there? I think there's. A, I think there is a meeting on the first meeting of the men. In Urban January. No, no, no. There's some. Yeah. Isn't it this week? Urban. Maybe Tree, there's that, something about the preliminary the, thing, the, the scan that they did of the city. Yes, but I think they're also that's what it is. maybe in the beginning yeah. of the new year they're already sort of talking about possible language for implementing some kind of restrictions on. But what is you it can through this trees. urban uh, tree task force though? Isn't it um, all now delegated you know, to I them? Think, I, I hope so, because okay. that's kind of the right. That's we should look. At. Just yeah. Google that. I think that's there are some meetings coming up, but you could look at the right. city website for that. Yeah. Anyway, so that was that was mm. one item on our very short agenda. Well, yeah, and that was the only almost well. I mean, oh, no, it was it was, uh, there was a... it was you know wonderfully short. There were two items yeah. on the city manager's agenda, and then three two... city council orders. That's it. Yeah, <coughs> right. And, and right. one of them was just a procedural one, like please videotape oh. the following meeting. Right, right, right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the orders on the, the city manager agenda uh, was for an, an additional sum of money. Three million is this bucks. For the Bigelow? Yeah. So mm. the thing is, a few a couple of years ago, I can't remember exactly when, the city took, did a friendly eminent domain taking of the old Chamber of Commerce building. Which at they were willing Minnesota. to give to the city yeah. or sell to the city. Yes. Um, I yeah. seem to remember eight hundred thirty-one thousand. Yeah. I hope I'm not screwing up the addresses here a little bit because it's eight something. Because, because there's actually several several buildings in play here as part oh. of the master plan. Wait, but I thought just the Chamber of Commerce building we're talking about. I think this is the Chamber of Commerce yeah. building, but the thing is, is that thirty one, I think. But yeah. you know, the, the it's like the, you know, it's like a, one of those three uh, three way trades in baseball. Oh. Okay, so right now there's a, um, I think there's kind of a, 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 you know, subsidized housing thing right just onto Bigelow Street, um, you know, sort of right across from City Hall. But there's also oh. the Lombardi building. Which is where the licensed commission, historical yeah. commission, is right at the was corner. Was that going away? No, no, oh. no. And then there was the chamber building, which was a couple That's of streets. That's the only up one I'm aware of. Yeah. Corner of Clinton Street. I didn't know about the one on Bigelow. And then there's City Hall. Okay. Yeah. So there are four players here. So the city. Oh, there's in terms a, of renovation. Yeah. So they want to do some renovations. They want to possibly move some of the um, functions uh, in, of in like the, the city. information right. technology might move out that, of yeah. City Hall into this into someplace else. Yeah. Now, why okay. would they be doing that? Well, maybe because it would work better, and it's also very energy intensive. I never actually thought of it, but uh, that's mm. what they said last night. Um, and also, there is this never-ending quest for more space for city councilors, for their aides, oh, for their puppies, for their dogs. Do they have their, off? Do they have a desk? Oh, they and they would probably need private meeting rooms for their their. No, but right now, what do they have? 
you, when they go to City Hall, do they have the, a designated desk or do they share space? They have like designated open... desks, but they're um, mostly in their own office. So, but it's a shared office. Well, it's like the new. That's in that the new office. Uh, you know, yeah. infrastructure now yeah. open. Open. Right. Whatever. In addition, City Councils have a contract use of the workspace or work oh, bar. Oh, work bar. Yes, work bar that's true. Over at yeah. uh, you know, so they so sometimes that's stuff. where they do their mm -hmm. meetings. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure they want to have it all in house and whatever, right? What about at home? Um, you know, I got to say, and, I, and again, <laughs> a lot I'm, of this stuff's done by email. I'm not, I'm not trying to yeah. put this as a blanket endorsement yeah. or anything, yeah. but I do remember a time when all the city councils were in the city council office, right? Yeah. Which is still there, but there ain't no city councilors in it anymore. Wait, what? Isn't it the city clerk and all those people? No, that's down no? on the first floor. Well, what is in there? But the staff people, people who staff the city council, and I don't mean the aides. Right. What so it was, uh, you know, Sandy Albano was the person who was in charge, but she's retired now. But I thought that's the clerk. Mary Horgan. No, 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 no. No, they're on the first floor. But so the oh, thing is, okay. is that the councils used to be in there and very few councils would be there on typical hours, right. working hours. Yeah. Because they, they, they you know, hold their office hours at places and, around the city, which is good. And mo yeah. many or, or most of the city councils had day jobs. So, the, you know, some still do. Right. So the thing is, why have why have a dedicated yeah. office space? That's a good point. Uh, when in fact you're yeah. at work, right? It must be a part time job. Ideally, it should right. be. But let's right. not even go there. All right. Okay. So the thing is, they want more space. So yeah. it, the more that they want space, the more mm. you're pushing people out. The IT okay. people have to get moved out. What about um, the mayor's office? Is that expanded? Because there's like five or six staff over the last uh, few mayors. Like, where do they all sit? Because that is they a actually, that's, job, that's isn't pretty it? palatial. They've got they've yeah. got multiple rooms in there. Okay. But um, the and it used to connect to the Ackerman room once upon a time. Oh. Actually, if you opened up a, there's actually oh a, did a, they stop There's that? a secret closet you could I open didn't up. I know and that. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Back when it was called the Walnut Room. I mean, the Ackerman room is not used all the time. Why can't they sit in there? Good, and they do. Okay. Right. But anyway, it's a multi-part, uh, multi-player uh, plan here because okay. in so, addition to the city hall. Then yeah. There's the, the uh, Lombardi building mm -hmm. where, you know, Historical Commission is, for example, they're, they're busting out at the scene. The Historical Commission is in the Lombardi building? Yeah, on the second oh, floor. Oh, I didn't know that. But it's a relatively short building. Yes. Now the question is, could you go up a little on that building? True. And the, the answer is, sure you could. Yeah, why not? Right? Yeah. So maybe the master plan will recommend going up a little that bit makes on sense. that. And then you, have, you can house some city functions in that. Meanwhile, the, the uh, subsidized housing they have over on Bigelow they're moving that into the chamber, the old chamber building, so that won't be city offices. Okay. But this way, the, the the building on Bigelow would then be available for city offices. We right across the street from City Hall. So as I say, it really is kind of a four-player deal here. Okay, so but it ain't cheap. No, it isn't. Well, the, so the three million is just to do some uh, improvements, not to do. Right. Just I'm, some, I'm thinking of the next agenda. Small item. stuff for yeah. City Hall, but not much. Uh, that'll be a bigger one. Yeah. But the thing is, that the eminent domain taking of the Bigelow Street building. Which one is not that? Not Bigelow, excuse me, the uh, one at Clinton, uh, 831 Mass Ave. Yeah, but where's that the three money. Bigelow Streets? That, that's on the side. They the took over. That a, was given to the them? It's the very first residential That wasn't building. eminent domain? No, no. The city has had it for... Oh, they own... Oh, okay, I didn't know whether that. whether it's Kings right. Housing Authority or whoever operates it, but... That's avail available. That's not yeah. the one. What's the street where Life Alive is? That's Inman. That's Inman. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, it's Inman, Big yeah, yeah, yeah. Clinton, Okay. Lee. Right, 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 right. All yeah. right. So, so uh, the second agenda item was also $3 million, but Dennis Carlone. That was for up, firehouses. Which I know. Was, but, I was really glad to see it. Right. But he brought up a really interesting point, which I remember because he said, because the, the, it says design and reconstruction. He said, "Isn't it going to cost more than three million dollars?" It going to cost and a lot. Like more. twenty-five million. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm glad that that point was made because yeah. that is a little misleading. Right. So, yeah. so the thing is, I didn't realize how old and unattended most of the fire stations in the city really well, are. Well, Denise Simmons gave credit to yeah. Councilor Mellon for who's really been all on the case. Yeah. She's totally hot to trot for this. Yes. So I think hot the, to the, trot. The That's most a bad analogy. No, right. Anyway, whatever, okay. Right, she's on the case. She's all right. No, yeah. no, no metaphor. But the thing is, is that that uh, I think the most recent fire station built was like at least twenty five years old or maybe longer. Which is the um, newest one? And then, and then, and then the, oh. the next newest one is something like eighty five years oh old or something goodness. like that. Right. 
And, uh, you know, there's, they need a lot of upgrades, and, and I think everybody kind of knows it, but it's been one of those cans that have been just kicked down the road. And the issue years. also of East Cambridge, because they used to have a small one, and that's now a hotel, and what right. is certain Kendall, Kendall Square. Square. Yeah, yeah. The, the old Kendall Square fire station yeah. is now the Kendall. Um, right, it's a hotel. So yeah. so now it's serviced by, I guess, the one right down here on Lafayette and also yeah. um, Inman Square, and there's yeah. a third one that it's serviced by. Yeah, I mean, there's probably it's some ideal far. Uh, yeah. optimal plan where you can put so fire right. stations, but right. even if you temporarily take one out of service, there's enough coverage that you can kind of double up and... and, and well, uh, that was brought up. They said if you're doing some rehab of one, what happens to this? Do they operate while you're doing the rehab, or do they... And I think, am I getting that right? No, I think they said it would yeah, just the be taken over. Do but, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some are more taxing than others. I think the main fire station of it, where Broadway meets Cambridge Street, is that the main? Is that the main one? Yeah, that's headquarters. Oh. Yeah, it's also the one where, where it's in the middle of everything. Yeah, that's also, I believe, unless things have changed, where the emergency communications were all housed upstairs in that building. Oh. I don't know if it still is, but that's how it was. Huh. Um, so there's a lot of important functions there. So if you it's do a major rehab location. of that building, yeah. you have to relocate a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not a small matter. No. But, you know, the city's been, um, you know, I mean, I, I often would credit Bob Healy for be the person who started the city down the road toward rehabbing city properties that mm -hmm. had been long neglected, yeah. right? So whether it was, you know, new police station or new library or new water treatment facility or capping the... Um, you know, the, the Payson Park Reservoir. Well, how long was he in, in office there? Like 30, 30, yeah. 32, 33 So I would years. imagine a lot of these things would come under his... Right, but know. the thing is, is that uh, a lot of these cans uh, were kicked down the road. Before and, him? Yeah, I think Bob kind of actually made it his business to mm -hmm. not only take them on, but I don't think he was particularly eager to leave being city manager until he knew that many of these projects that he'd kind of initiated were going to get done. Okay. And, yeah. Ri and Richie Rossi, you know, because they, they were like the tag team. Richie, also, he would be sort of like the clerk of the works. He would, he would kind of ride herd on a lot of the projects mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. they kind of worked together. I mean, Bob was not a people person who sort of would interact yeah. with the public on things. Like a Bob uh, Bill Village. Right. <laughs> Richie was great for that, you know. Yeah. So the, the, you know, the two of them, whether it's Bob initiating things, making sure the finances work, mm -hmm. and Richie making, carrying things through and dealing with the more public relations mm -hmm. part of things, that was a really great team, mm -hmm. you know. And it's kind of nice to see with Louis de Pasquale in there that the, right. pre the tradition he was is around for a long preserved. time too, so he knows oh, yeah. a lot of these oh, yeah, projects. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he comes from a finance point of view. And honestly, the best people to really be thinking yeah. these things through long term planning are wise, people that are know people the who budget. Work in, yeah. in, in, in money. financing. Yeah. What does oh, it yeah. cost? Right. Yeah. So, anyway, so those are some of the main things that were um, going down at the meeting. One thing that I, you know, was. Um, <coughs> Something I, I found a little bit curious was um, oh, the urban agriculture. Yeah, on urban agriculture, yeah. urban and farming. that was brought up. It's like, why is this? I mean, people grow vegetables, yeah, without yeah. any kind of guidance, you know, yeah, um, other than beekeeping and pigs. Right, I guess. right. So the thing is, yeah. is that so there was an initiative on urban agriculture some years ago. Mm. I'm trying to remember who were the sort of the main uh, sparks to make that happen. I think Council Chung was sort of big on Wasn't it. it? And, Ma Ma not I can't say how to trot on it anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. That so. was just to deal with fire. <laughs> fire, not just right. a female. No. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. That, that was, um, it's not my intention. Go ahead. Uh, but the thing is, is that so that there there was some initiative to make some of those things happen. Um, was it spurred by the beekeeping thing, or was I it think before it was, that? Or pigs? there were there, there were pig? particular people who. Yeah lobbied and said, well, you know, we really want to be able to keep bees, we want to do this, so... Oh, some chickens, counselors, that's true. Right, yeah, so yeah. some, mm -hmm. some counselors sort of took it on. Um, and it got farmed out, pardon the phrase, um, but hey, if <laughs> my puns are bad, you should have listened to Vice Mayor Deborah last night. Oh, point. yeah, apparently she was but really... But she was, she was good, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, she says, why is this dying on the vine? Yeah, you know? right, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, it, got, it did get literally farmed out to the yeah. community development department to put things together. And I think Ellen Kakinda was the person who oh, was Oh, and sort everyone of gave her praises. Uh, but then yeah, she, she, she yeah. off to Seattle. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and Jan also brought up, brought up something last night. Well, whatever happened to the outdoor lighting proposal? Oh, that was a big task force for that as that well. She had another metaphor for that. I forget what right? it was. Right, you know. Yeah. Um, so for lights that out, one. Lights out on that one. Lights out on that one. <laughs> 
right? Um, and, you know, people are saying, like, is this yeah. because community development is overworked? Is this be some sort of negligence? all of the above. Is this because there was some ticklish zoning issues and complexity? You know, yeah. part of it, I'm going to suggest, is that yeah. the person who was riding herd, there's another one, right? The person who was, this, we're going to bring back urban cattle farming, <laughs> right? Cambridge Common, you know, I'm going to have a few heads of steer out there. Yeah. All right, right. so the, who was heading that? All right, so that oh, was, was Ellen Kinder, Ellen, right? And she you left know, was and great. sort of gets the ball dropped, yeah. maybe a little. Um, but Chris Basler was the person who was sort of riding herd on the outdoor lighting, and he moved to Delaware. There you go. And, you know, sometimes yeah. it's as simple as the fact that the person who was main, the main person, yeah. the point person, moved who was, or left the yeah, job. Yeah, and who was very involved and in it. Was maybe no, the work's passed on, but it not with the be, same urgency. But maybe, yeah. maybe the way they passed the football. Yeah in community development needs a little work. Okay. That's I think that's probably a, a f speculation. But, but wasn't but the lighting thing really at right. the ordinance stage or did it have to go back for tweaking lighting, and that's where it stayed? Um, this began as what they call the Teague petition, one of several right. Teague petitions. Oh, right, Charles. Um, yeah. um, you know, about to, we wanted to change the zoning to address uh, outdoor lighting. And, and I thought tricky. that was kind of yeah. also, I think it was sort of wrong-handed. I that, think other people thought that too. Yeah, the planning yeah. board did and agreed. Um, so they made a task force, the, the intention being to create a municipal ordinance, which is different than the zoning ordinance, right. um, basically to uh, regulate all outdoor lighting. Uh, so wouldn't, see, if you did it by zoning, the only lighting that would be affected would be new construction. Uh, so, so any oh, existing right, lighting grandfathered would be grandfathered in. in right, right? right. So the idea, if you did it with a municipal lighting, it would basically just be an ordinance. Mm -hmm. Now, there'd be a phase-in period, maybe you know, three to yeah. five years or something, mm. but then eventually everybody has to get on board. Um, and, you know, also, honestly, regulating lighting, I mean, seriously, what does this have to do with density, uh, with zoning, you know? Yeah, um, no, I have it, a, there's a separate issue. Yeah, yeah actually. Well, it's like the surveillance stuff, right. too. I since mean, I'm anyway. since I'm the king of wild tangents, I'll just say, yeah. you know, on C Quick Fix, Commonwealth Connects, somebody was sort of really getting all worked up about the fact that there were a couple of little, very, very small signs like a neon type signs that were in uh, a few places that said atm machine here or something right but it was very small but it you know it was intermittent right uh and i thought yeah what's the problem wait was it on the machine uh no no it was in the window Just, oh uh, right okay. now technically the cambridge zoning ordinance has yeah. a regulation of outdoor light of uh, um light signage oh sign, okay. sign ordinance um, that basically prohibits a lot of things that, to, in this day and age, I mean, it, was, it dates back 20 some, some years. It seems like it has it, to be updated. I think maybe it does need some yeah. updating. Yeah. So, for example, can, can anybody really seriously make a case that having a very modest yeah, ATM little sign. thing that, was, that, that, that flashed, it, that, that's a Especially real serious problem? Especially if you're looking problem. for an ATM. It's helpful, isn't and, it? I, and I could have this wrong, but, mm. it, you know, you may remember the Harvard Square kiosk used to have like this rolling news scroll oh, yeah. across People the top. People didn't like that. I don't know if they did or didn't like it, but the, and I could mis I could be misreading the ordinance. So yeah. sue me if I if I did. Well, but, we won't sue you. Um, but Correct. the thing is, is the way I my first reading and looked at that wouldn't be legal today. Hmm. So I'm thinking to say, you know, now normally when people are doing zoning ordinance these days because they want to up zone or they want to down zone yeah. or they yeah. want to regulate this or tell you you can't cut down a tree mm -hmm. or whatever. But you know, maybe we need to start a little movement toward tw zoning tweaks. Like a little zoning petition that says, could we just change this so it's okay to have a neon sign? Or so is if it, okay? it does come under the right. Robinson Or for example, yeah. my mm -hmm. own personal uh, yeah. choice would be to allow certain zones like Central Square mm -hmm. to have an allowance for a little bit more gaudy lighting. <laughs> because I think it would, it would kind of be a pretty good yeah. match for the place. You know, and as rather long as it's not psychedelic and flashing all the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic. No. <laughs> right. 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 No, no. I mean, we're not talking about something yeah. like wildly distracting no. or like you know, no. airplanes are going to call in and say, "Wait, wait! I think we tried to land. It turned out it was." You Central think some Square. people don't like the Christmas lights out there? Or no, they're not. They're to me. They're well, you know, they're, actually, they're there is an exemption lights. for those lights for uh, holiday lights. So they holiday actually had to get an exemption. Temporary. Yeah. You know, no, it's an exemption. It's written into the law, oh, okay. so you can put them up. You don't have to get a special oh, permit or anything. Good, good, good. Um, mm -hmm. But only because they're not meant to be permanent, right? Anyway, I just think there are a lot of little things. If you were to do a complete read of the Cambridge zoning ordinance, yeah, you'd find a lot of clauses that may have made sense 25 years ago, or yeah. maybe not. 
Mm. Or maybe they were the result of a particular kind of hard ass lobbying group back then who yes. maybe, you know, wouldn't be listened to today. Mm-hmm. Right? And maybe it's time we just did a few a quick reads and then without it up. going to sort of the big process. Is that You'd have to still go through the process, but the yeah. thing is is that you know, not everything needs to be some tearing aside. Maybe they could just get them all together and then you just say, Okay, is this blah, 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 you know, just go through it like that and then go to the proper places yeah. to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems crazy. All right, we got two more minutes. So, you want to do our You want to do this here? now? So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Judy, All right. You, uh, this tell is us about uh, this people uh, Astro Weeks, which those of you who are of a certain age might know, was one of, I think, the first album of Van Morrison when he was 22 years old. And um, they are having a, uh, we don't, this is a photo of, this was actually the album cover, but the Cambridge Arts Council and the Cambridge Library are sponsoring first at noon on this Saturday at Green and Bay Streets where Mr. Morrison actually lived with his uh, girlfriend then wife um, for a year in 1968. Very pivotal year and there is a book based on this called Astral Weeks. I actually have it out by Ryan Walsh who I think is uh, local and there's musicians who are local who are going to be there at 12 to, there's going to be some, uh, it's the 50th anniversary of his masterpiece, which I agree with. And uh, it's going to be organized, let's see, blah, 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 let me see. There's going to be some commemoration from the city. But then at 3 o'clock, which I knew about, then there's a panel discussion at the Cambridge Public Library with all of these people. Oh, yeah. so, so that sounds pretty good. So it's that's a two-part this... celebration, Saturday, 12 noon, at Green and Bay Streets, where he lived for a year and came. I didn't even know that. And yeah. I was here in college. I'm giving my age away in 1968. And um, I don't think I discovered that album until a little later when I actually lived in California for a while. And I, it is magical. And it, apparently it wasn't successful when it first came out. Here's a good yeah. idea for Cambridge what? Historical Commission or somebody oh. else. Oh. Let's put together sort oh. of a list of addresses and locations where a lot of other characters have Didn't they do a music thing. bike thing before? Maybe, yeah, you know, do it as okay. a bike ride. Right. But, you know, so a, a document. All right. Anyway, okay. we'll be back in a few minutes. Yes.